Welcome to Nollywood Edits. This is the continuation of the movie Blood Sisters. If you haven't watched the part one of this video, you should probably watch it before playing this one so you can understand the story. Sarah and Kemi are wanted by the police after further investigation. Colas burial preparation are made and his family members and friends mourn his death. Semeni begs to see her brother one last time before he is buried, but her request isn't granted. Colas' mom, Mrs. Ademola, sets off the path of vengeance. She pays the entire police department to do the job of capturing Kemi and Sarah. She doesn't attend the burial ceremony because, as per tradition, a mother doesn't bury her child. It is considered a taboo. She visits his grave with a man whom she had an extramarital affair with to birth Kola. In short, she had an affair with some top minister when her husband was alive and gave birth to Kola. Femi is the firstborn, followed by Kola, before Timei, who is the last child. Kemi and Sarah left the city for the countryside. While in the countryside, Sarah tries to connect with her parents, but to no avail. They both try to adapt to their new life. Kenny comes over one day to give them money and promises to aid them with their passport so they can leave the country. Sarah starts feeling regretful for leaving Kenny previously for Kola. Kemi contacts Kola's best man at the wedding, Akin. Kemi trusts him enough to tell him the truth about everything and begs him to investigate Kola's past. She tells him that Kola isn't who he appears to be. The girls run out of luck and they are almost caught by Mrs. Ademola's agent. Fortunately, they escape. Akin informs Inspector Joe about the call and tells him all the details including the past about Kola. Kenny loses the girl's passport, so the girls couldn't leave the country. They have nowhere to go, so they end up stealing a random guy's car. Sarah questions Kemi on why she has a gun, and Kemi defends herself. The girls end up in an argument, but later reconcile with each other. They move on to the next location, which is Kemi's grandmother's house. Kemi thinks no one will find them there. Inspector Joe, aka Chicago, receives instruction from the higher ups that declares Sarah and Kemi as the only suspect to the murder case. But the inspector thinks otherwise. Akin goes out of his way to investigate Kola's ex girlfriends, asking if Kola has ever laid his hands on them. Kola's ex girlfriend gets agitated and sends him out of her house. Sarah and Kemi's ride dead busted on the road at night, so they decide to sleep in the car. The next morning, they set out on foot. A car passes by and they are offered a ride. The girls hesitate but later give in because the people accent seems like good people. The girls tell their destination and it seems they are going the same way. The driver of the vehicle claims to be a crying doctor. He gives them a place to stay for the night and food to eat. The girls are really grateful for his help. Kenny manages to track the girls to the doctor's place and goes after them immediately. The girls had their dinner while Kemi goes to shower. The good doctor decides to have a drink with Sarah and manages to drug her. He puts her on an operation table where he sections her body with a marker. He also knocks Kemi out and slashes her with a knife after she comes out of the shower. Kenny arrives at the location of the girls. He knocks on the door. When the good doctor answers the door, Kenny persistently requests for the girls. The good doctor gets angry and slashes him on the throat with a knife and he falls to his death. Kemi manages to wake up. She knocks out the good doctor before he could drag Kenny's body. Kemi grabs an unconscious Sarah and flees the scene immediately. It turns out the doctor was an organ harvester. Kemi escapes with Kenny's car. The next morning, the girls wake up in the car. Sarah inquires what happened because she had been unconscious the whole time. She also detected Kemi bleeding profusely. The police arrive at the murder scene and without proper investigation, they suspect the girls. Meanwhile, Femi and his wife decide to take out Blade, the assassin, permanently in order to make sure they are clear from all suspicion of attempting to kill Kola. Back to the girls. Since Kemi is weak, Sarah decides to take the wheels and drives into a remote village to ask for help since they are far from the city because Kemi is drowsy and is about to lose consciousness. Kemi grows in pain through the entire ordeal. Sarah carries Kemi through the entire village, knocking on every door, asking for help. They are finally let in by a woman after incessant pleading. Inspector Chicago finds Blade body in cold blood. He reports the information to his senior, but is reproved. Inspector Chicago believes the girls are not at fault and they killed Kola out of self-defense. But his senior thinks otherwise and even places the good doctor and Kenny's death on the girls. Allegedly, the doctor died that night. In the small hut, the human helps Kemi tend to her injury. They thank the woman before taking their leave. Kemi tells Sarah of what happened to Kenny because Sarah had inquired. Sarah breaks down after hearing the news. 
Inspector Chicago feels Femi is guilty of Blade's death and also has something to do with Kola's death. Kola's friend Akin searches through Kola's belongings, looking for clues. He finds evidence of Kola oppressing different girls. Seemingly, when Kola was alive, he would maltreat his girlfriends, then draw the moment on a piece of canvas like some sort of sick sadistic obsession. At the same time, Simei plans her escape from the mental hospital. She manages to escape successfully and runs off immediately. Akin gives the evidence he found to Inspector Chicago, but the inspector informs him that he has been put off the case and can no longer help. Timei returns home and chaos breaks loose. Timei tells her mom about Femi hiring someone to kill Kola at his engagement. Femi blames his mother for everything because all of this wouldn't have happened if she had shared her love and had not been biased towards Kola. The girls managed to reach Kemi's grandma's place and they settle in. Unfortunately, they were still caught by the police, but instead of jailing them, they were handed over to Mrs. Ademola. Mrs. Ademola gathers the family member together so they can kill the girls. Tumei tips off the information to Inspector Chicago. Chaos breaks loose as Tumei goes crazy when she gets her hand on a gun. She releases the girls and points the gun to her family members. She shoots down her brother and sister-in-law till only her mother is left kneeling at gunpoint. The end.